The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 11185 in the name of Rachel Hamilton on the condition of Scotland's road. This debate will be concluded without any questions. Me put can ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press the request to speak, to speak buttons now. And I call on Rachel Hamilton to open the debate. Ms Hamilton, seven minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, Scotland's roads have suffered from chronic underfunding, and this underfunding has allowed for the situation that many of us endure on a daily basis, potholes described as craters and our roads resembling the surface of a moon. Scotland's roads are in crisis. This anecdotal evidence is also proven by experts. Confused.com found that Scotland has the worst potholes in the whole of the UK. Recent statistics suggest that more than a quarter of country's roads are in an unsatisfactory state and between 2015 and 2017 almost 12,000 miles of these were either earmarked for inspection or required maintenance with 423 potholes reported each day. Millions is spent by local authorities to repair potholes and two million has been paid out in compensation over the past 10 years. Indeed, Compensation claims by motorists for damage caused by potholes alone has risen by 130% between 2013 and 2017. I was speaking to Sustrans this morning and they tell me that in Edinburgh over the past five years, 111,000 was paid out to motorists and a staggering 66,000 of that was given in compensation to cyclists. Funding to maintain Scotland's roads has been cut by a fifth over the last seven years. A report from COSLA found that it had fallen from £691 million in 2010 and 11 to £554 million last year. The Transport Research Lab found that for every £1 reduction in local roads maintenance spend could result in a cost of between £1.67 and £1.76 to the wider Scottish economy. Potholes are our nemesis, causing misery to our constituents and costing our local authorities millions. Undoubtedly, the beast from the east made things worse. The extreme weather has worsened the conditions of the road, so much so that budgets for repairs will barely make an impact. And of course, we must acknowledge that this is something that, although local authorities try to combat, it is a problem that has become out of control. The Scottish Borders, for example, has some of the worst roads in Scotland. The Scottish Borders, sorry, the Scottish Borders, for example, has some of the worst roads in Scotland and in the UK. My constituents agree with the Federation of Small Business when they say that run-down local roads hurt small businesses. A community group from Newcastleton even said of the potholes, this is having a, a dilapidating effect on our community, with many now not attempting travel in the dark or even confident about leaving the village. There is a real fear of risk, serious accident or injury being caused by driving. Inheriting a backlog of repairs, our current administration at the Scottish Borders Council has set aside 22 million for roads and bridges over the next three years, and recently with an additional 1.8 million investment, a total of 32 Borders roads will be improved as part of a 2.6 million resurfacing programme this year. But despite this encouraging news, the fact remains, the Borders has a roads network of 3,000 kilometres and with over 900 potholes recorded last year alone, increased investment will not go far enough. This is true for all, because with over 150,000 potholes between Scotland's local authorities, the Society of Chief Officers of Transportation in Scotland have warned that funding cuts mean it is not possible to repair each one. The problem, therefore, is very much real and impacts us all. And despite efforts from local authorities, there's simply not enough they can do alone to fix the roads. However, the Scottish Conservatives have a plan, a means to support local authorities and help repair our roads, a pothole fund of 100 million over the next Scottish Parliament, 20 million a year to support local authorities to fix our roads. This funding will see 2 million potholes repaired over the course of the next Parliament, enough to fix current and future potholes. Local authorities would bid for the fund to support their own efforts to see road repairs. This is action that Scottish people deserve, a road network fit for purpose. Yeah. Scotland needs action now to stop this troubling situation from exacerbating further. A good road network will benefit us all. It will benefit most motorists, 
pothole-free motorists can drive in comfort and safety. It will help cyclists, for they will be able to ride in safety, not at risk of puncture or falling off due to an unexpected terrain under the wheels. It will help local transport too. Bus journeys made safer, smoother and with less chance of something going wrong. In a recent promotional video for the National Trust for Scotland, Sir Chris Hoy talks about how he hates potholes but loves how Scots can be the best in the world. We can be the best in the world. Just look at Sir, um, the Scots uh, John Loudon Macadam and how he was the inventor of the Macadam road surface. And of course, we can encourage more visitors to the area. Instead of looking out for potholes, visitors can look at the beautiful countryside instead. We want to make a good impression here in Scotland, and one way to do that is by making our roads pothole-free and safe. Deputy Presiding Officer, I have people in my constituency in such despair that they are starting to fill in their own potholes. Roads so bad that they can't drive to their own front door. It's not right that the situation has got so bad that members of the public are taking action into their own hands. This fund will give my constituents and each member's constituents the roads and repair services they deserve. And to close, Deputy Presiding Officer, I reiterate, the Scottish Conservatives are offering real solutions with a plan to introduce this pothole fund. A solution to fix our roads and fill in our 153,000 plus potholes. Scotland's roads are in crisis. The roads in the Scottish borders are in crisis. The SNP must focus on the day job and resolve the national shame that are Scotland's roads. Thank you very much. I call um, open debate speeches of four minutes. I call Tom Arthur to be followed by Jamie Green. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I'm very grateful to uh, Rachel Hamilton for securing this debate. It's a very important issue. It's one, of course, which we get a tremendous amount of casework and interest from our constituents on. Though if I could very gently suggest to the Conservative Party, if they want £100 million to put into a pothole, they might want to first address the £500 million black hole that their tax plans would create. However, not to become too partisan in this meeting of the Scottish Parliament for this debate, I do, I'm very grateful for this opportunity because it allows me to highlight some of the fantastic work my colleagues in SNP-led Renfrewshire Council are undertaking. Only today, in the Johnston Gazette, it was reported in the front page, seven I'm million I'm sorry, pounds. I know you're very friendly with the jo Johnston Gazette, but I'm not. Yes. No props, please. My apologies, Mr. Officer, but in case anyone missed it, let me read it out. £7 million to fix roads in ruin. Indeed, it's actually more than £7 million that SNP-led Renfrewshire Council are putting into the roads. £7.2 million programme. That means 86 roads across the region are to be resurfaced. 33 re -ro uh, roads surface-dressed or patched. 46 footways will be resurfaced. This represents the biggest single investment in roads ever made by Renfrewshire Council. And there will be on an ongoing programme of pothole repair. And this has been complemented by the money invested by the Scottish Government, by Derek Mackay, £312,000 for Renfrewshire and £136,000 for East Renfrewshire, both of which make up my Renfrewshire South constituency. And indeed, I would want constituents watching this debate, because I'm sure many are, because potholes are a very important issue, to have an idea of some of the work it will be undertaken. So, presiding officer, I'm delighted to share with the chamber that roads to be resurfaced include, in my constituency of Renfrewshire South, the A761 Bridge of Weir Road, part of the High Street in Loch Winnock, Beave Road in Johnston, Kilbarkin Road in Johnston, Barrican Road in Johnston, the Barrican Road Interchange, Brayhead in Loch Winnock, Bridesmill Road in Loch Winnock, Bridge Street in Linwood, Eastweald Bank in Kilbarkin, Kilbarkin Road in Kilbarkin, Locker Road in Kilbarkin, Kibbleston in Kilbarkin, Lynn Park Gardens in Johnston, McDill Street in Johnston, Newton Avenue in Eldersley, and Spateston Road in Johnston. This makes up a grand total of 41,000 square metres. That's actually, and you might be keen to know, 10,000 square metres more than the total floor space of the Scottish Parliament. 
And indeed, it's not just roads that we're going to be repaving in Renfrewshire. If we're going to be doing footways as well, Bridge of Weir Road, High Street in Johnson, where my constituency office is located, Clippins Road in Linwood, Park Garden in Kilbarkin, Miller Street in Johnston, Quarrelton Road in Johnston, Beach Road, Beaver Road in Johnston, Easewell Bank in Kilbarkin, Old Road in Eldersley, so Eldersley's not left out, Victoria Road in Brookfield, McDowell Road and Falcon Road. There is a bonanza of resurfacing about to happen in Renfrewshire South and indeed across Renfrewshire and East Renfrewshire. And I want to welcome this. It demonstrates at both a local council level and at a national level, SNP governments, SNP administrations investing in Scotland's roads. And I know that's something all of my constituents will be delighted about. Thank you, Thank you very much. I call Jamie Green to be followed by Colin Smith. Mr Green, please. I'm absolutely delighted uh, that the uh, people of Renfrewshire are entirely 100% happy with the state of their roads. But judging by the casework that I get into inbox uh, from Renfrewshire, I can assure the member that is absolutely not the case, uh, given the sheer scale and volume of uh, casework that we get from that part of the world. And it's great to see Rachel Hamilton's debate today spurred his council into action at long last on the issue. Um, <laughs> The reality is the truth. The truth is that roads right across Scotland, not just in Renfrewshire or North Ayrshire or any of the other constituencies you'll hear from today, are deteriorating. They're flooding. They're full of cracks and full of potholes. And every week, every one of us surely must read our inboxes and have complaints, not just from drivers who've had to go out and replace tyres and suspension, bumpers, but also from cyclists and motorcyclists who are struggling to use our roads, pedestrians, wheelchair users or those on mobility scooters. So it really touches anyone who uses our roads. To put this into scale, uh, last winter, drivers lodged complaints about a road in Scotland every three minutes. Depending on who you ask, it's estimated that up to a third of our roads are in need of some form of repair. That's over 4,771 miles of road that need fixing. As Rachel Hamilton said, there are over 154,000 potholes in Scotland. Uh, now, councils have indeed been struggling with this. Uh, rather than spending money on fixing those roads, instead they're paying out compensation. It seems like they are indeed stuck uh, in a uh, rotational situation that is hard to get out of. Um, re uh, repayments for damage has increased by 130% uh, since 2013. <coughs> and it is a chronic issue. It's not just the weather that's causing it. It's year after year of roads which have been left uh, to uh, get worse. The problem is it's not just uh, related to one part of Scotland. It depends where you live. It uh, will determine how bad the roads are. In the West Lothian, for example, it's estimated that around 20% of roads are in need of repair. But if you live in Argyll and Butte, it could be up to 45% of roads. And as is so often the case, it is rural roads who are the last to be addressed and fixed. I recently ran a uh, social media campaign uh, asking people, uh, uh, perhaps uh, to my regret, to post pictures, uh, comments about potholes in North Ayrshire. The, the, the Facebook post uh, attracted 500 comments in a week. It was the most I've ever had on any post, even anything constitutional. Uh, but it reached over 50,000 people. Uh, and that struck me. Uh, there were many, many people from across uh, my area <coughs> posting pictures and commenting on specific roads that they wanted me to come and have a look at. Um, but the reality is, uh, you know, road maintenance funding has been reduced by around 20% in Scotland. Um, now, the cost of fixing all this, according to one organisation, the Society of Chief Officers of Transportation in Scotland, estimated up to £1.6 billion. And I don't think for a minute uh, that the Minister has that sort of money uh, uh, kicking around up his sleeve. Um, but the reality is that many councils simply do not have enough cash to resurface roads. The problem isn't limited to council roads. Uh, we know uh, that trunk roads and motorways are also suffering. Over a tenth of Scotland's trunk roads are showing damage. So I'd be keen to hear what the Minister is going to do to address that. Yes, there are ways of fixing this. We could use technology better. Uh, Self-healing uh, asphalt, for example, has been talked about and been used in some countries for well over a decade. But this piecemeal approach is just filling in holes uh, rather than looking at long-term funding uh, solutions and structures uh, is the way forward. The drivers are sick of listening to politicians across all levels of governance saying, that road is not my responsibility, it's someone else's. Well, they say enough is enough. 
and so do I, presiding officer. Thank you very much. I call Colin Smith, to be followed by Kate Forbes. Mr. Smith, please. Thank you, presiding officer, and thank you to Rachel Hamilton for bringing forward her motion, which has allowed today's debate on the condition of Scotland's roads. Having previously been a, a councillor for over a decade and now as an MSP, when I say there are few issues as often that are raised as often and with as much passion by the public and the state of our roads, I, I suspect it's a sentiment that many other members will recognise. The number of those complaints, however, is definitely on the rise, and you can see why. As the motion notes, Confuse.com found that the potholes in Scotland's roads are now the worst in the UK. Figures from the most recent local government benchmarking report revealed that around a third of all roads are in need of maintenance work. And research by the Society of Chief Officers of Transportation in Scotland found that the cost of the backlog of repairs needed in Scotland's roads is valued at around 1.6 billion pounds. Now this would be an onerous challenge at the best of times but when it comes to council budgets we actually live in the worst of times. We've seen a 1.5 billion pounds cut in council budgets since 2011. Austerity from the UK government has been passed on with interest to local councils by the Scottish government and the impact of those political not economic choices are there for all to see through the plague of potholes on Scotland's roads. Those funding cuts mean council roads budgets have been slashed by 20% over the past seven years and the number of roads maintenance workers has also fallen as councils hemorrhage jobs by the tens of thousands. Those workers who remain are facing an ever-growing workload with fewer resources and pay which has been fallen in real terms. Unison's Road to Nowhere report highlighted low morale amongst road repair staff with almost one in ten survey respondents stating that morale in their team was low or very low. And the same report found that the majority of workers reported skipping breaks or working late just to get through their growing workload. Presiding officer, until we have a fair funding deal for our councils, then we will not begin to tackle the crisis of maintenance on our roads. But the problems on roads are not just confined to those maintained by local authorities. The number of complaints I receive about the lack of basic maintenance on some of our trunk roads is also on the increase, such as the A76, where so-called temporary traffic lights on the enter foot stretch, reducing the road to a single lane, have been in place since 2014, as we await so-called urgent repairs on what is Scotland's forgotten road. And the A77 and A75, crucial arteries for the southwest, leading to our ferry terminals at Cairn Ryan, have been starved of investment for far too long, with an economic impact there for all to see. Presiding officer, we all know we cannot build our way out of issues, all the issues affecting our roads, such as congestion. We need better investment and proper regulation of our buses and a railway system where passengers, not profits, are the priority. But that does not excuse the lack of basic maintenance in our roads, which impacts not only on our drivers, but others, such as bus users. For people, for example, travelling by foot or bike, the impact of poorly maintained pavements or potholes can mean serious injuries. We also need to consider just how we repair many of our roads and how we guarantee the standard and longevity of this work. Technological innovations have the potential to reduce the time and cost of roadworks and we should be supporting the development of new techniques such as the use of waste plastic being pioneered by Dumfriesshire firm McRubber, which has real potential to repair many of our roads in an environmentally friendly way. But, President Officer, unless we begin to address the funding crisis facing our local councils, we will never address the crisis of outstanding repairs on Scotland's roads. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Kate Forbes, followed by Brian Whittle. Ms Forbes, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Last year, I drove uh, apparently at 19,000 miles across my own constituency. That's just uh, restricted to the constituency. So whilst not an expert on the matter of potholes, I'm certainly very experienced when it comes to potholes. Highland Council represents a huge road network, 6,754 kilometres of road in the Highland Council area. And like other speakers uh, in this chamber, with the exception apparently of, of Tom Arthur, um, we do have problems with uh, potholes as well. At the beginning of the year, to pay credit where credit is due to Transport Scotland, Transport Scotland moved very quickly on the trunk roads on the West Coast, the A82, A87, by releasing an additional uh, four million pounds to Bear Scotland in order to be able to deal with uh, resurfacing works on the West Coast trunk roads and brought forward their programme of works to get started much quicker. Then just a, a few months, a few weeks ago, when it comes to local authority roads, which is where the real problem is, uh, Derek Mackay announced uh, an additional £10 million for local authorities and Highland Council 
got the, the largest share of that, which is appropriate considering the uh, mileage of road network it needs to cover. And I think for me, the priority here is that with additional funding, with council tax having gone up, with uh, an increase, albeit a small increase, to Highland Council's budget, it is right and fair that Highland Council move as quickly as possible to filling uh, potholes and to resurfacing roads that in some areas of the constituency are exceedingly bad. It's not just been a case of bad weather because I was being contacted by constituents prior to the bad weather about certain uh, stretches of road in the Highland Council region which desperately needed attention. And one of the things that I am very concerned about is when I see uh, urban roads in the Highland Council area getting a uh, quicker treatment than some of the worst rural roads uh, in the villages of places like uh, the west coast of Skye. And what I would like to see is a clear um, schedule of works like Transport Scotland has produced for uh, improvements quickly so that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Constituents have contacted me, and again, uh, I think Rachel Hamilton mentioned it as well, where constituents are um, choosing to help. We've obviously got uh, numbers of tourists starting to arrive, and uh, one constituent in particular, Annie and Neil Ferguson, were telling me stories um, about the way that they've had to uh, help visitors whose hire cars have been damaged by the, the potholes and by the surface of some of the roads that I mentioned uh, in the west coast of Skye, which are Highland Council's responsibility. She, she wrote to me saying that last set Saturday, the breakdown truck attended her very small village 12 times and that uh, they had been personally involved with seven lots of visitors in the space of a week, feeding them, providing lifts, making phone calls, even changing tires. They've had Germans, French visitors, Italians, Slovakians, Americans and Chinese visitors all coming to uh, ask for help because of coming into difficulties with the state of the road. And I could quote so, some other stories as well. So I would love it if uh, Tom Arthur could put his council colleagues in touch with the Labour Lib Dem Independent Administration at Highland Council and perhaps share some ideas as to how Highland Council can start making better progress in filling the potholes and ensuring that my constituents can get to work and can go about their business without fear of punctures and damaging their cars. There is money there, four million to Transport Scotland, biggest share of the 10 million to Highland Council, a decent share of a uh, budget this year, and they need to publish a schedule of works and get moving as quickly as possible. Thank you. I call Brian Whittle, followed by Liam Kerr. Mr. Whittle. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I thank uh, Rachel Whittle? Whittle? No. <laughs> Rachel Hamilton? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, Rachel Hamilton for bringing this uh, uh, debate to the Chamber and giving me the opportunity to once again uh, highlight the issues that we have in the southwest of Scotland as the Transport Minister is well aware uh, of the, uh, the campaigns to upgrade the 77 and the 75. Uh, they are well underway and I did uh, recently, just for his information, take an HGV uh, trip down the A737 all the way to Cairn Ryan. Uh, it's uh, interesting being in a 44 tonne lorry that actually has to swerve to avoid potholes and, and it can leave it to your imagination how big you think those potholes must be uh, to, to, ha to have an impact on a 44 tonne lorry. And I say I would like to thank Bullet Express for, for allowing that to happen. And during that journey, uh, it, it, it's quite enlightening uh, because we go through uh, a lot of small villages like sort of the Mabels and the Governs uh, at sort of half past nine at night and how close you are uh, to the parked cars on either side, how close you are uh, to those houses on either side uh, of that lorry. And it's quite, an interesting, it's quite an interesting experience coming out the other side of Ballantrae and climbing up that hill as uh, the ferry has, is being unloaded at the other end and you're meeting other 44-tonne lorries coming the other way and you're crawling along at four or five miles an hour with the wing mirrors missing each other by a few inches. Uh, it's, it's quite something to see. I think uh, also what's happened along the A77 between Moncton and Kilmarnock, we now have temporary road signs, uh, surface signs that have appeared. And if, how bad do the trunk roads have to become before action is taken? Because they are inspected weekly. Uh, they are becoming extremely dangerous, especially uh, to motorcycles. 
So given the condition of, of the 75 uh, and the apparent inability of the Transport Secretary to effectively address uh, the issue, I'm considering going elsewhere for a solution, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. Rather than treat this as an infrastructure issue, I've decided to, as a question of culture. A77 is no longer a road, Deputy Presiding Officer. It is a kinetic sculpture, which aims to reflect the Scottish Government's approaches to dealing with health, education and the economy, crumbling under the pressure and full of holes. And now to the next part of this art installation, I'll be applying to the Creative Scotland for a grant to repair the roads. My working title is Competence, or how I learned to stop making excuses and get on with the job. The STPR2 effectively means the Transport Minister won't be announcing any new major capital projects until shortly before the next election. So surely this means he has more time to dedicate to maintaining the existing road network. But even when he has funds, Deputy Presiding Officer, they don't seem to be spent. There is a £50 million underspend uh, uh, currently, and, and, I, and I, if you go around the chamber here, I'm sure we could all grab that £50 million and, and, and show you how that could be spent. The Scottish Government are prepared to ignore the southwest of Scotland uh, and allow the roads to crumble while crowing over expensive vanity projects like the electrification of the A9, which the Scottish Power say, I think I might. Kate Forbes. Did, did, did you just, I was just wondering if the member said that um, electrification of the A9 is a vanity project, so ensuring there are better, better infrastructure works to the Highlands are not vanity projects. <laughs> A raw nerve there, Mr Whittle, I think you touched. Thank you very much. Um, I th can I thank Kate Forbes for her intervention. The thing, see, the thing about it is, is, is that the Scottish Power say that there is a huge capacity issue that, they, that currently hasn't been addressed by that project. And while you spend money on that, all the infrastructure in the south of Scotland is crumbling and left un un unattended. So we shouldn't underestimate the economic impact made by the condition of Scotland's roads. While I'm not ruling out the possibility that the condition of the roads is part of the new economic strategy to boost the wheel and tyre repair sector, I suspect that's not the case. I think that uh, while it's hauliers and other businesses dealing with the expense of repairs to the vehicles or simply commuters caught up in traffic when someone bursts a tyre on a narrow section of road, there is cost to the economy. And just finally to Tom Arthur, that's what we mean when we talk about investing in our economy. This is one of the ways, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, Mr Whittle. I call the careful by John Scott. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and thank you to Rachel Hamilton for securing this vitally important debate. It is particularly pertinent to me because I actually wrote to the Minister a fortnight ago about this. I was on the A90 uh, coming back from four for one evening in April. And I went through the three miles between the A935 and the B966 turnoffs. The locals will know it. It's the section of pinkish tarmac which passes Stracathro services. Now, I was absolutely incensed as I slalomed through the large deep potholes, dodging other motorists doing the same and grimacing every time my wheel crunched into one. I was in a little 15-year-old sports car that day, which reacts somewhat negatively to dropping into a hole at 70 miles an hour. And I've frequently ridden that road on a motorbike, and hitting one of those holes or a last minute swerve to avoid it on two wheels could easily end in tragedy. So I immediately composed a letter to the minister asking for urgent action. Now the courier picked up on this and reported a study showing that last year around 22% of A roads in Angus were categorised as red or amber. That is up from 17% when the SNP took over. And they also reported in Perth and Kinross the percentage was 40% red or amber. That is nearly half, up from 36% when the SNP took over. Although Kate Forbes may wish to note that stat has improved since a Conservative Council took over uh, and made tackling potholes a priority and I'm sure they will be pleased to help you as well, Kate Forbes. So that is 324 kilometres of road in courier country in need of repair. And this is more than a cosmetic issue. This is an economic issue as well as a public safety one. It is not straightforward to get to Brechin and Forfa from Aberdeen by public transport. Many people who do not need to make the journey could be put off by the risks of driving, and that's not good for the local economy. And there are public health risks. The minister will be well aware of Potzilla, which opened up in March on the A90 outside Lawrence Kirk. Less a pothole, more a sinkhole. It put estimated 21 cars on the verge with burst tires and buckled alloys in one evening alone. Financially crippling, but just imagine one of those was a motorbike. Now, what will really have riled motorists on the A90 is that when the courier asked for a comment, a Scottish government spokesman said, 
The budget for maintenance has increased, and a recent Audit Scotland report found that 87% of roads are acceptable. The recent severe weather caused more damage. Our trunk road operating companies make carriageway defects safe, etc., etc., etc. It doesn't say anything about the A90. It didn't acknowledge that there is a particular issue here, and it didn't say anything about when and indeed whether this particular moonscape would be repaired. Now, I have a good deal of time for Mr. Youssef, both as an individual and as a minister. I believe he appreciates an opportunity to tell it straight, and therefore I'm not convinced that this generalized metaphorical pat on the head for the people of Northeast were his words. I'm sure he would not have wanted to disappoint the people of the Northeast by the apparent lack of urgency or focus on the actual problem. So I was very pleased to have this opportunity uh, given by Rachel Hamilton to give me this opportunity to ask the Minister in closing to address this specific point and give a cast iron reassurance on the record to the North East that the A90 and especially this particular three mile stretch will be sorted once and for all and give a time scale to do it. I'm sure that he will do that today for the people of the North East because I know that they will be watching with great interest. Presiding officer, the state of the A90 is hugely concerning. It is damaging to the local economy, to the vehicles that use it, and I pray that there will not be any damage to health and safety arising from it. Whilst it may not yet be time for heads to roll over the A90, it is time it got fixed so our cars and motorbikes can. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I call John Scott be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr Scott. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. And can I begin by congratulating Rachel Hamilton on securing her motion for debate today. Can I also put on record how much I share our concerns about the deterioration of Scotland's roads and nowhere more is this a problem than in Ayrshire, as Brian Whittle and Jamie Green have already highlighted. So starting with the M77, the deterioration of this road, much used by my constituents, has been very significant over the past winter. Cars travelling at 70 miles an hour, hitting potholes and swerving to avoid them in heavy traffic, have once again made this road a less safe place to drive on than it should be. And until Lee and Kerr spoke, I hadn't even thought about the danger to motorbikes. That the standard of the road carriageway and surface has fallen below acceptable safety standards is, I believe, beyond doubt. The Minister is very aware of my constituents' concerns and I await responses to many of the concerns raised by them, knowing as I do what a significant mailbag he will have on the subject. Turning now to the A77, and Brian Whittle has already drawn the Chamber's attention to the deterioration of this road from Kilmarnock to Port Patrick, again affecting my constituents as it is part of the main arterial road between Glasgow and Wigtonshire. And again, this road has dramatically deteriorated over the winter. Of course, I understand that Transport Scotland's first duty over the winter was properly to keep the road clear of snow and ice, and I salute their efforts in this regard. However, Transport Serve and Transport Scotland, immediate priority now must be to make our trunk roads safe to drive on again. Indeed, just today, I've been contacted again by yet another constituent whose vehicle has suffered £500 worth of damage. And I know from better experience how difficult it will be for him to gain compensation for this damage. Turning now to the roads maintained by our local authorities, I know and understand the pressure the Ayrshire Roads Alliance is under to repair winter damage. But, roads, but having spent part of the bank holiday weekend travelling the roads of Ayrshire, many of them in Jean Freeman's constituency, I would ask the Minister and the Ayrshire Roads Alliance to note the poor state of the A714 south of Bar Hill and before the Cree Bridge, as well as the A70 from Ayr to Muir Kirk. So, presiding officer, I will close at this point no, I will turn now, if I may, to the potholes in my Ayr constituency. Uh, these two are of enormous concerns to my constituents. However, the difference between urban potholes and trunk road and rural potholes is the speed limits in force. Car damage is much less in built-up areas than in areas where the speed limit is 60 or 70 miles an hour. However, the potholes on our major trunk roads represent a real threat, threat to life as Liam Kerr has noted, and that is why massive efforts must now be made to repair them. So, presiding officer, I will close at this point this time, although I could go on, as I am certain you will by now have got the picture of the state of the roads in Ayrshire without detailing every last pothole on every road. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Um, it's the first time I've seen somebody closing twice, but there you go. Um, I call on Hamza Yusuf to close for the Government and Minister. Seven minutes, please. Mm. Thank you, uh, Presiding uh, Officer. Can I thank uh, Rachel Hamilton for bringing this debate to Parliament? She's absolutely right, of course. I think all of us around this chamber will have had complaints in from our constituents around uh, potholes uh, on the road. I know I've seen that, uh, for example, in my own constituency, uh, sometimes on the trunk road network, of course, sometimes uh, on the local road network as well. So she's absolutely right, of course, uh, to bring this uh, debate to this chamber. I think some, some very good speeches around the chambers, with some notable exceptions, uh, without naming any names uh, at all. Uh, so let me start with the, the government's responsibilities, and then I'll move on to local authority roads if I can. So government's responsibility, of course, my responsibility, is to maintain the 3,500-odd kilometres of uh, our trunk road network, which stretches uh, from, from north, uh, of course, uh, south to, 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 to north uh, of the country, east uh, to west, and many of them have been mentioned here in the debate today. Uh, some of the numbers uh, around uh, our investment, uh, 8.2 billion since 2007 uh, has been uh, invested. Uh, and of course, there has been an increase uh, in the 18-19 budget uh, of 65 million, an increase of 65 million to 433 million for uh, uh, our budget for maintenance uh, of the network. Now, uh, that is for a number of different reasons. Uh, you remember probably the Audit Scotland report 2016 on, 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 the, on the condition of Scotland's roads, uh, local roads, uh, of course, uh, in, in, in a less acceptable condition. At that point in 2016, 87% uh, of our trunk road network was in acceptable uh, condition. But clearly, since then, we've had extreme weather challenges this winter. I think almost everybody in their speech has recognised having a detrimental effect on our road uh, surfaces. So therefore, uh, we've got to invest more, which we're putting our money uh, where our mouth is in relation to the trunk road network. Um, so th that is uh, worth uh, putting, I think, on the record. In terms of uh, what we have done, uh, in terms of resurfacing, um, there is, uh, despite what we're saying around uh, uh, our post bags being full and our mail bags being full, our inboxes being full with complaints, uh, it would be worth saying that from 2016 to 2017, there was a 10% increase uh, in the satisfaction from the, 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 the uh, users uh, of our trunk road network. Now, again, 2018 figures might be different because, uh, as I say, I am the first to accept that the weather challenges uh, have had, had a deteriorating effect uh, on our road surfaces uh, on the trunk road uh, network. Uh, when it comes to uh, operating uh, companies, I would hope that most members uh, across the chamber have a relationship of sorts, if not a good relationship, with the operating companies uh, who uh, operate within their constituencies and the trunk road network in the constituencies. If they don't, I'd be more than happy to facilitate those introductions. So a number of members have asked about particular um, potholes uh, on trunk road networks, Liam Kerr in particular in the A90. Uh, uh, if he doesn't have a good relationship, then of course I'm more than happy to do it because it will be the operating company that has a duty within their contract. If there's category one defects, that, you know, that can cause harm in, in the way that he describes. Uh, which I don't doubt at all, then they should be repairing those uh, as soon as possible. And in fact, the ones that he's mentioned, let me take it away. I don't have uh, an answer for him uh, right now in this member's debate. Let me take that away for him to see whether or not that has been repaired or not been uh, repaired. Of course I will. John Scott. I thank the Minister for taking the intervention. And can I ask, um, is it done as a matter of course that when I or other MSPs write to you with particular concerns about a particular stretch of road or a particular pothole, in a road, uh, on a trunk road, for example, is that uh, concern passed as a matter of course to the operating companies from your office or not? Minister. I'd be, I'd be uh, surprised if we didn't have a conversation. I, mean, I think we essentially would have a conversation uh, with the operating companies to ask them about XYZ pothole that's been raised by XYZ MSP to allow us to draft the response. Sometimes, of course, we'll, uh, allow the, we'll ask uh, uh, my officials to respond uh, I'll communicate directly with the operating company and then uh, write off a, a response. So if there are, but, but I think there's probably uh, worthwhile uh, if any member wishes to raise particular concerns about particular potholes. And I know many of you are saying that there's 
uh, you know, a, a long list nonetheless. Uh, speaking to my road maintenance team in Transport Scotland, that is an open offer uh, for anybody uh, across uh, the chamber uh, to take up. Uh, we did, of course, since the, 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 the winter, realise that there, there was a need to increase our investment and uh, towards the end of the financial year, uh, an additional uh, amount of money, as many members uh, have mentioned here, uh, redirected towards uh, carriageway repairs, a further 6.5 million invest in delivering maintenance schemes. Uh, of course, I will. Kate Forbes. Um, th thank the member for taking an intervention. Notwithstanding the pressures that everybody else has indicated, does the uh, minister recognise the particular pressures that face Highland Council with such a huge network of road mileage? And that's why they got to the largest share of that money. Minister. Yes, I do recognise now a good relationship with the leader of Highland Council, uh, Margaret Davidson. And, and Highland Council are not alone. Uh, Argyll and Butte Council will be another one that is huge in terms of geographic scope and therefore uh, a number of issues. And I'm meeting with the leader uh, Omar Vargail in our southwest uh, of Dumfries and Galloway. And there's others, of course, that cover a, a large area. But Highlands and Islands Council, uh, I think Kate Forbes is right <coughs> to, 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 to make mention uh, of that. So we are, uh, my point on the trunk road network is to say that we are putting our, our money where our mouth is. Now, the, the turn to local uh, authorities. In fact, actually, before I do that, just the other thing to say on the A90, of course, uh, in the northeast. Uh, is that we are investing uh, heavily in that. He will be aware of, and I'm sure very supportive of uh, the work we're doing in terms of taking forward Lawrence Kirk, Lawrence Kirk Junction, AWPR, drilling of the A96, the Horrigan Roundabout, and indeed the average speed cameras between Dundee and Stonehaven, which will help to improve uh, road safety. In terms of local roads, uh, many members here have mentioned uh, Scots. They're an organisation I have a good relationship uh, with, uh, as, you'd, as you'd imagine. I don't... Uh, take away from the fact that there's been challenging times for local authorities in the last few years uh, at all. But clearly this is a, a, an issue of a priority of where you choose to spend your budget. Look, no party uh, at the local authority level uh, necessarily has clean uh, hands on this thing. All of them have to reflect really hard on where they've chosen to spend uh, their money uh, over, o over the years. Now, the 22 million, I think, over three years that Rachel Hamilton mentioned, mentioned um, from Borders Council. It might go some way, of course, and, and will go, I'm sure, uh, a good way in repairing uh, local roads. Uh, worth mentioning that the SNP opposition did want an extra two million uh, onto that, but that was voted uh, down. But nonetheless, 22 million, in one second, 22 million over three years. But how does that compare to the percentage of the budget uh, and the Borders budget uh, over the next three years? Uh, perhaps positively, I'm just asking the question that in previous years, the level, and Scots would be the first to tell you this, the amount that was needed to be spent on road maintenance uh, probably fell far short than what it should have been. Rachel Hamilton. I, th I thank the Minister for taking the intervention. Just for the record, um, obviously the previous administration was the SNP, so therefore uh, we are um, maintaining all the roads that they didn't do and didn't provide the budget for. However, does the Minister believe that uh, a long-term um, solution, it, uh, for example, Road Smart, I am, they um, consider that we should be looking at uh, rather than kind of the backlog that we have now, we should be investing in the future uh, road maintenance and, and providing um, that within the budget, as the Scottish Conservatives suggest with the Pothole Action Fund. Minister. So I won't go back and forth on the borders issue because, uh, as I said, I don't think any political party here can claim to, to, to uh, have uh, given it the priority that it should have given at a local uh, level. Uh, and, 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 you know, from a Scottish government perspective, as I say, we've increased our trunk road uh, spending, which I'm pleased about. I'll turn to our pothole fund, uh, or I'm, I'm not sure what, it, what it's termed, but a hundred million fund, I think she said, over the parliamentary term. That's clearly something that Conservatives can take forward in the next budget negotiations uh, with Derek Mackay. He will, of course, uh, I'm sure uh, give you the challenge back that you cannot uh, ask for a tax cut uh, and then, of course, ask for £100 million uh, unless you're going to tell us where that £100 million, for example, would come from. So that is something that, of course, uh, your finance spokesperson uh, has every right to take forward uh, with Derek Mackay during budget negotiations. So from our perspective, uh, we will continue to invest uh, additional monies where we can, uh, the £10 million pounds additional that Derek Mackay announced on the back of the beast from the east uh, is one example uh, of that. I'll work hand-in-hand uh, hand with local authorities to see how I can be helpful uh, in relation uh, to my role in the Trunk Road Network, but also recognising uh, that uh, where we can be helpful to local authorities in this regard, we absolutely will. So my offer to conclude is a very open one to, to members if they have particular potholes that they want to raise with me. Uh, my TS and Transport Scotland official colleagues will make themselves available 
uh, we will continue to liaise with other political parties with any ideas that they have uh, in relation to improving our local roads and from a Scottish Government perspective we will continue to do the job uh, that we are paid to do which is of course to invest and maintain uh, our trunk road network. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate and I close this meeting.